Odie? You ready to go? Come on, let's go! Come on! Welcome to Jeremiah's Fifth Ministries, a place where you can grow in God's Word. Let's go to Matthew, the ninth chapter there. Matthew, the ninth chapter, talking again about faith foundations. Amen. Matthew 9, 27, it says, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Now, that would get your attention, wouldn't it? You know, you're walking along there, and you hear somebody crying. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, help me. Yeah, amen. That'll get your attention. Amen. Especially if they're following you, you know. And, you know, and these two blind men following him, you know. And they said, have mercy on us. Praise the Lord. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, believe you that I'm able to do this? Oh, wow. He asked them an important question there, doesn't he? He said, do you believe I'm able to do this? You know, and he is asking us that today. Does he? Or do you believe he's able to help you? Do you believe he's able to fix your situation? Do you believe he's able to do anything that you need in your life today? You know, he's asking that question all around the world right now. You think I can help you? Do you, do you believe I can do this today? You know, he's able to do anything. Amen. He's God, and he's able to do anything that you need, praise the Lord, in your life. You should never limit him. You should never feel like he can't do that, you know, because he's able to do You're not talking to a person. You're talking to God. Amen. You're talking about God who created the universe and he created everything here and he's holding you up. The Bible says he holds everything up by the power of his word. <laughs> Amen. Think about that. You know, he's, he's God and he's able to do it. Amen. Amen. He says, are you able to do this? Then said unto him, yay, Lord. I like that. That's a good answer. You know, they didn't go, oh, no, I don't believe you can do that. You know, and there's people today, you know, they believe that about God. I don't know if he can help me. I don't know if he's real. I don't know if he can do it. Go, oh, yeah, he can do it. He can fix it. He can change it. He can do everything he wants to do. He's God. Amen. And he can help you. And it's not even hard for him without even moving a finger. He can do it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. They said unto him, yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes and say, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man know it. But notice there, though, he said, according to your faith, amen. He was talking about their faith, amen. He didn't say his faith, notice there. Did he say that he was going to heal them according to his own faith? No, he was talking about their faith, amen. That's powerful to look at, you know, thinking about he's, he's, he's holding them responsible for their healing, isn't he? That's powerful to look at. You know, let's look over here at Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 21st verse. Matthew 9, 21, and he says here, he says, for she said within her, herself, if I may but touch his garment, and talking about the woman with the issue of blood, I shall be whole. Amen. Isn't that good? He said, if I touch his garment, I shall be whole. Oh, that's good. You know, if you touch Jesus, praise the Lord. Do you believe you'll be whole? Amen. Amen. He says in the 22nd verses, but Jesus turned to him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole, praise the Lord, amen. Now, I should tell you something about God's will there, amen, shouldn't it? You know, about healing, about what you're needing today, you know? He didn't say, whoa, 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 I'm not going to give this to you. <laughs> he didn't say that, did he? He didn't say about the blind people either. He didn't say, whoa, 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 well, now, wait a minute, you know, we, we, I've only can touch just a few blind people today, and well, I'm going to be tired. I, I can't help you all, you know, I'm at, I'm tired. I need to lay down. You know, I've already touched a bunch of people today. I can't, I can't pray for no more. I'm exhausted. You know, he didn't say, no, I'm, go away. You know, we don't, we don't pray for healing people here. We don't pray for help people with their needs here. No, no, you, you go over there, sit down. You know, this, this is, we don't do this right now. You know, and he didn't say, we're not going to even form a line here. You know, we, we don't pray for people for healing. No, he showed his will, didn't he there? He showed them how he feels about taking care of their needs, didn't he? He took care of their need, didn't he? Amen. He didn't just push them off. Amen. And he that's the way he is today. He's not sit there, sitting there with you going, hey, I'm not going to meet your need. He's not saying, hey, I'm, I've had enough today. I can't do any more. <laughs> no, he, he's, he's, that's his will. He wants to meet your need. Amen. He showed through Jesus that healing was, was part of his will. He's willing to do it for you. 
Amen. And he's willing to do that with any of your needs. Amen. He's not sitting there pushing you off. No, you, you know, you, you don't need no money. You know, no, no, we're not. You don't need to have what you need to have today. You know, you're going to eat Roman noodles all this week. No, <laughs> he's not going, Hey, you don't need that, you know, that situation fixed, you know, no, no, we're not, we're not going to meet that need. No, his will is to meet all your needs. Amen. He's a God that wants to take care of all your needs. He shows his will here with healing, doesn't he? He's showing he wants to meet that need. Why? Because he's a good father. Amen. He wants to take care of the needs of his children. Amen. He's a good father. He created you. Did did you know that? You say, well, no, I was created and, you know, with an unmarried couple and I was an accident. No. You weren't an accident. Your spirit came from heaven, and God knows it doesn't make junk. Amen. He creates everybody special and unique with special gifts. Amen. You were created special, praise the Lord. And, you know, it's so special, he sent his son to die for you. Amen. So you're special to God. Amen. Everything about you is special. He created you from his own. He created your spirit. Amen. In heaven with a purpose and a plan. Amen. He created you special and unique. Amen. So he said, and listen to what he says here to her. He says, and Jesus turned to him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Notice he didn't say his faith made her whole, did he? He said that her faith made her whole. Amen. That's powerful to think about it. And he said that, let's look over here at Mark, the 10th chapter in the 46th verse. Notice these last two people we looked at said that their faith made them whole. Amen. Amen. Mark 10, the 10th chapter in the 46th verse, it says, and they came to Jericho and he went out of Jericho and his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus and son of Timotheus, uh, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, this man's blind. <laughs> think about that. He's blind. And I'm not laughing because he's blind. It's just like, it's interesting to think about, you know, he was already persuaded about Jesus. He was already thinking about Jesus and he doesn't even see him. Think about that. Wow. And these people were blind and they, they didn't even see the works of Jesus, you know, and yet Jesus tells them their faith makes them whole. Think about that now and you know, listen to what he says here. He says, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. And he cried with a more great deal. Thou David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. And you think about that today, you know, whatever your situation is, you know, like this, this person here, he's in a situation that was out of his control. There wasn't anything else he could do, you know, but Jesus heard his cry, you know, and maybe today you're in a situation that's dark. And you don't know what to do, you know, and you didn't, there's nothing you could do about the situation. You got to put there by the circumstances of life, the challenges of life. You may even been born into the situation, you know, some people are in family situations, you know, and you think about that, you know, you're in that situation, you know, but yet this man just cried out for Jesus and he stood, stood still. Amen. You know, I was thinking about it. I was watching a program recently. It was a, a gentleman, I believe it was a, it was a Superman show. And the, these kids were crying out for their father, you know, and, and, and Superman, he was in this situation, you know, and, and he, the, he, the bad guy got him and he wasn't going to get away, you know, and everything. But then he heard the cry of his sons across the other side of the planet. And all of a sudden it just rose up in him. He slapped his hands together and that bad guy went flying and he flew across the world. <laughs> Something about the cry of your children. You'll do some things. Oh my goodness. You'll come out of your situation. You'll do some unusual things. And you hear the cry of your children and Jesus, he, when he hears the cry of this, this gentleman, I believe it's just like the cry of his children. He stopped. <laughs> he said, now, wait a minute. I hear something and somebody needs something right now, you know, and maybe you're in that situation right now. Maybe you need just to cry to Jesus for a little bit, you know, let him show up in your situation. Let him fix your situation. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's a good father. Amen. And he doesn't like it when his children are going through challenges and they're, they're struggling. He loves you. Amen. He's a good father. Just like Superman took off across the world. You know, God's everywhere at one time. Amen. He'll help you in your situation. Amen. If you'll cry out to him today. <coughs> Amen. Amen. He's able to take care of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's faithful to do it. Amen. Amen. So he stood still and commanded him to be called. He said, wait a minute. 
and he calls for him. Amen. And they call the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise. He calleth thee. Amen. I love that. That's good. And he cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? You know, he wanted he would have done anything for him. Amen. And he will do anything for you because he loves you. Amen. He's a good father. Amen. And he just he just shows up and says, What do you need? Amen. And he's saying that to people today that aren't even saved. He's, he's people because he loves his kids. You know, the Bible talks about that. He loved you even before you were saved. And God so loved the world that he gave his son. And, you know, that was before they were even saved. <laughs> Amen. When you're out doing your all, all your bad stuff, when you're doing everything you think you couldn't even get forgiveness for, God loves you. Amen. And he, he's, he still hears you and he wants to love you. You say, well, I'm in sin. He can't hear me. Well, he heard Adam, didn't he? You know, in the garden of Eden, Adam fell and he, God was calling out for him. Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? So he can, he, you can hear him and he can hear you even when you're in sin. Think about that because he loves you. He can, he can see through all that. He sees through all the mess that you're in and all the challenges that you're in. Amen. And he still reaches out and he loves you. Amen. Amen. He's a God that loves you no matter where you're at. He's a God that wants to take care of you wherever you're at in your situation today. It doesn't matter what your situation is. He'll stop and he'll ask you, what do you need? Amen. Amen. I remember that time when I was uh, right, I rededicated my life to the Lord. I remember I was going down the road, you know, and uh, man, I was, I was, I was coming home from a party actually is what was happening. And I've been saved. I believe it was about 13 when I got saved. But, you know, because of things in life, I got off, you know, and I needed to rededicate my life. And I remember I was coming back from a party, you know, and I'd been drinking and, and doing uh, some drugs. I was doing a little bit of everything, you know, so I was pretty high. You know, I'm coming down the road, you know, and the road's wiggling. <laughs> I'm in a sports car and I'm wiggling. And I never forget, you know, I was, I was, I was going down the road. And I'm like, God, if you can get me out of this. Man, I'm a, I don't know if I'll ever do this again, you know. And I heard it by spirit, you know. He says, he said to me, you know, and while I was going down that wiggly road there, he says, you don't have to live like this, you know. And he's telling people today again, you know, he's saying, hey, you don't have to live like this. What can I do for you? Amen. What can I do to straighten out your situation and fix your situation today? Praise the Lord. Amen. You don't have to keep going the direction you're going. But, you know, we have not because we ask not. Amen. All we got to do is ask. He doesn't make you do anything. He wants to help you. Praise the Lord. Amen. He wants to fix your situation. Amen. And help you get on the direction that you need to go with your life. Amen. Amen. So then Jesus answered him, said to him, what of that? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way. But notice what he says, he says, thy faith hath made thee whole. Notice it was his faith. It wasn't God's faith. It wasn't Jesus's faith. It was the man's faith. Amen. Notice here is his faith that made him whole. Amen. And so if you're going to get, if we're going to get our needs met, if we're going to get the things we need from God today, we're going to have to know some things about faith. Amen. Amen. You know, we got to understand some things about faith. Amen. If we don't understand the basics or the or some fundamentals about faith, amen, we're not going to get the things that we need from God, amen. And it's not just about that, you know, faith is for so much more than just getting your needs met. But, you know, it's important that we understand it, you know. I mean, as soon as you get born again, you have so many needs, it seems like, you know. And so you got so many things you need, things you need God to help you with. But, you know, if you don't understand faith, then it's important that, you, that you're not going to get those needs met. Amen. And it's important that you understand the foundations of faith. Amen. Understand, you know, that, you, I mean, if some people are probably saying today, they're like, well, why am I going to have to hear about faith again today? <laughs> you know, I've heard so much about faith. Well, faith, if it's feeding your babies, amen. If it's, if it's getting you healed, amen. If it's paying the bills, praise the Lord. Then, then you're going to want to hey, tell me again about faith. I mean, I want to know more about faith. Keep telling me about faith. Amen. Because it's taking care of my needs. It's taking care of what I need to do for God. Amen. It's, it's getting me renewed. Amen. Getting me excited about life. Amen. You, you can't have too much about faith. Amen. I, I, you can't get enough of it. Amen. But if you, if, if you don't see those results in your life, you're probably not getting the right things about faith. You need to understand faith. Need to know the foundations of faith so that God can do some wonderful things in your life. Amen. Amen. He wants to do some wonderful things in your life today. So if it's by our faith, we better understand it. 
Amen. We've got to have a good understanding of what faith is in our lives. Amen. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Let's look. At, we're going to understand faith a little bit more. Let's look at Second Corinthians five seven real quick. Second Corinthians five seven. And of course, I'm getting there quick. If you don't have time to turn there, just write them down. Praise the Lord. Replay it. Whatever you need to do. But listen, Second Corinthians five seven says, "For we walk by faith and not by sight." Amen. So if we're supposed to walk by it. We're supposed to get our needs met by it. Praise the Lord. We better understand it. Amen. We better have a good understanding of what faith is for our lives. Amen. Hebrews 10, 8 says it like this. It says, now the just shall live by faith. Amen. So if I'm supposed to walk by it, live by it, amen. And if I'm supposed to get my needs met by it, I better understand faith. Amen. You know, I've got to have a good understanding of how it works, you know, and how I can use it in my life. Amen. If, I, if I've got to use it for all these things, I better have a good understanding of what it does and how it works. And they find, you know, if you took a, uh, if you had a watch today or, or a computer, you, you take them apart, you know, and you look at all the things that are in there, you know, you, there's lots of things that cause those things to function the way they need to function. Amen. So it's important that we understand how it functions and how it works in our life. Amen or we can't use it, you know, and we're not going to have our needs met. We're not going to be able to walk by it. Amen. We're not going to be able to do the things we need to do by faith. Hebrews eleven six says it like this. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. Did I say that? Yeah, I did. It is impossible to please God. So we're going to need to really understand it. You know, if we're going to have to get our needs met by it, if we're going to walk by it, Amen. If we're going to please our God by it, amen. You know, and of course, you know, if we're going to receive from it, you know, if we're going to do all these things with it, which are key essential parts of our faith, then we need to understand it. Amen. We've got to understand how it works and how it's going to make our lives better. Praise the Lord. Amen. So notice here that we live by it. We please God by it. We receive what we need from it. Amen. There's, there's so much to it. You know, living by faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it's important that we understand the foundations of it. You know, I, I remember uh, here, and I live in Edmond, Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, as a, we drive around Edmond, Oklahoma, there's always building going on. You know, they're always building houses, it seems like, everywhere, you know, and lots of big houses. And it's it's very interesting. You know, you drive around, you're like, wow, they're building more houses there. And, wow, they're building more houses here. It just seems like they're building everywhere, you know. And uh, you, you'll go into a new neighborhood, you know, and you'll see the foundation there, you know. You'll see the, the slab of concrete out there, you know. And it's interesting, then you'll see tubes going down into the concrete, into these holes, you know, and you'll see all kinds of things that they had to do to prepare that foundation. And they're making, then they got wood around them, you know, to make sure that concrete's drying just right, you know. And then they got the steps going up most of the time with concrete, you know, to those steps, you know. And you think about it, that foundation is so important, amen. You know, you're not going to have the house that you want without the right foundation. Amen. They wouldn't have, if you didn't put the plumbing in first, you're not going to have the, the restrooms that you need. You know, if you didn't put the wires in correctly, you're not going to have the electricity that you need. Amen. If you, if you didn't get all the foundation, right, that house is not going to build the, be the built the way it needs to be built. Amen. It's interesting, you know, how they do that. You know, they'll, they'll be doing more than one at a time, you know, <laughs> And, you know, in your walk with faith, sometimes you're building foundations. All kind, You know, you're learning about righteousness. You're learning about being led by the Spirit. You know, you're building foundations all the time. But those foundations are important. You know, the walk of love. You know, if you don't understand how to walk in love, which has a lot to do with what we're talking about today, then you don't have the right foundation, you know, then you're going to have some challenges, you know. You know, people today don't even understand about love. It would surprise you what they don't know about love. Amen. You know, if you know, you know the God kind of love, it's unconditional. Amen. It's a love. We talk, talked about it earlier. It's a, it's a, it's agape love. It's unconditional. It's not about what you do for me. It's a, it's a, and it's not about all the things, how you act. I'm going to love you, period. Amen. That's the agape kind of love. Amen. But if you don't understand love, then, you know, you're going to always think it's based on the, all my works. You know, it's going to be based on the, all I do for you. I remember when I was learning about this, you know, I didn't know much about love, you know, and you, and you basically, you, you compare it to all the things in your life. You know, you, you start to compare it to what's going on around you, how people are loving you, you know, and in life, lots of people, they love you conditionally, unfortunately, you know, but that's not how God loves people. 
And, you know, and you're not supposed to love people that way either. You know, you're not supposed to base it on conditions in their life, you know, and what they do for me, you know, and we were supposed to love them with a God kind of love. Amen. But, you know, if you don't know about that, then you, you know, you, and you haven't been taught the way you need to be taught, then you're going to always think that you got to have conditions for love, you know, but I'll never forget. I was working this job, you know, and I, and I felt like, hey, I'll never please God if I don't do everything perfect, you know. And so at the job, you know, I was trying to do everything clean, every corner perfectly, you know. And don't get me wrong. You're supposed to do your best at your job. You're working for the Lord. Don't get me wrong. But you, you, you're not doing it, you know, because you're trying to please him by the works. Amen. You're not trying to please. He loves you no matter what you do. Amen. He's a God that loves you no matter what you do. You're doing it because you love him, you know, to do the best job you possibly can. But it's not based on, you know, what, you know, on your conditions and all the things that you, you know, God doesn't make it on conditions of what you do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen about that, you know. Uh, you know, stipulations and conditions. If you don't do all these things, then I can't love you, you know? No, that's not how God works, you know? But if you don't have a good foundation on love, then of course you're going to always feel like you got to do certain things or he's never pleased with you. Uh, no, he loves you unconditionally. He's not basing it on what you do today and what you do tomorrow. No, he's already, he loves you no matter what you do. Amen. Because he's God. Amen. And he is love. <laughs> Amen. He is a loving God. Amen. Amen. You know, so I was driving around like these houses and these foundations, you know, they were, they're already made. So these, these houses, you know, they're going to be great houses when they're, when they're built, praise the Lord, because they have a good foundation, you know? So it's important with faith that you have a good foundation of faith. You understand it really good so that you can build with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. I remember playing guitar and I like to play guitar. You know, I have a lot, I have a good amount of guitars, praise the Lord. Very blessed. But you know, when you, when you, when you play it, when I was learning to play guitar, I always brought in this music, you know, and be like, Hey, I want to learn this song. And I want to learn this song. And I want to learn this song. And what ended up happening is I learned these songs, you know, but I never learned the foundations, you know. And as a matter of fact, I even got in a band at one point, you know, and I'll never forget. I had to have another guy tune my guitar because I literally didn't know the foundations. I literally didn't know how to do the, 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 the beginnings of playing guitar, you know. And you think about that, you know, if you don't have good foundations, then you can't do so many things, you know. Sure, I could play a song. I could play someone else's song that I would brought a tape in, you know, for, you know. But I didn't know the foundations, you know. I didn't know how to do the basic things, you know, tuning a key, you know, playing a certain key. And I could have played probably any song if I'd learned the foundations. Amen. And so it's important that you learn the foundations. I remember I'm, uh, we were, I, got, I got really excited at one point, you know, around my house, you know, because I was fixing all kinds of things. You know, I found out, I learned about YouTube and I, I learned about how you can fix all kinds of stuff, you know, with YouTube, you know, I'll never forget this, you know, and we had a washer that was having some trouble, you know, it'd take 10 years to wash. <laughs> and I come to find out, you know, after watching this YouTube video, this specialist with washing, you know, this guy knew about washers, you know, he'd, he'd fixed washers and things like that. He said, it's this part right under here. You know, if you replace this part, then your washer will work great. You know, if this is what you're having problems with, you know, that is exactly sounded what I was having problems with my washer, you know? So I went out and I ordered this part, you know, from this company, you know, and I got that part and I got it in, put it right in there, you know, and my washer, man, we could wash within 30 minutes. I was like, dear Lord, that's wonderful. <laughs> we can fix it in 30 minutes. We can get our clothes clean in 30 minutes, not an hour and a half, you know? And so I was really excited about this. So I got, I was like, wow, you know, so I started using YouTube for all these other things, you know, I'm like, wow, man, you know, I have other things I need to fix around the house, you know, I learned about how to fix a swimming pool, I had a swimming pool at the time, you know, and I learned about all the parts of the swimming pool, how to fix that, you know, and fix the swimming pool, you know, it had several things that need to be fixed in the, and the pump and all these things, you know, and fix the pool, you know. I'll never forget that I've, I had this one really unique situation, you know, you say, well, why are you talking about this? I'm going to get to it. But uh, basically I had this TV, you know, it was a massively big TV and I was going to give it to my, uh, my, my mother and my father. And, uh, but it had a problem after I gave it to him, I looked it up and told me it was this little bitty chip about this big. And I'll never forget, you know, I was like, wow, that's powerful. So I'll get a TV like it. You know, I found another one that was a good deal. Took that piece out because it was the same piece, put it into that TV and fixed it. Think about that. You know, wow, I'm not an electrician or nothing. And I'm fixing a big TV, you know, with YouTube. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, but you know, what happened was I got a hold of somebody that knew the ABCs, someone that knew the foundations of TVs. 
someone that knew the, the foundations of a washer, you know, he was able to help me get that fixed, you know, somebody that knew the foundations of a pool when I was able to get that fixed, you know, you think about that today, the foundations are so important, you know, what you're building your foundation on, you know, you're not just hearing a little bit over here and got a part over here and got a piece over here. You need to have the full foundations, amen, so that you can build that house the way it needs to be built. Amen. Amen. You know, it's important that we have fundamentals fundamentals of faith. Amen. You know, there's some people that make faith so spiritual, you know, it's like they're drinking cup, cup with drinking a cup with angels every day, you know. <laughs> you know, they they make it so spiritual that you know if you know they're drinking their coffee with angels every morning, you know, they they they're so spiritual that we will never get it, you know. No, that's not how faith works. Amen. There is an understanding. You can understand it today, praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to be talking about all the aspects of faith, and you're going to have a lot better understanding. You'll see how it'll function better for you, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's important that we have the right foundations. Amen. Amen. And if we have those right foundations, we can do lots of things with our faith. Amen. Go over to Hebrews 11 there. Hebrews 11, and we're going to look at the first verse. And this is usually what people think the, the definition of faith is. Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Wow. Is that the definition of faith? No, it's telling you about faith and what it does, doesn't it? It's, it's basically it's telling you about faith, amen, but it doesn't tell you exactly what faith is. And we're going to talk about what faith is. You know, faith, if you look it up in the Vines Concordance, the definition of faith is a firm persuasion. Amen. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God. Amen. It's a firm persuasion is what it is. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God is what it is. Amen. That's not too spiritual now, is it? Amen. It's a firm persuasion. Amen. You got a firm persuasion about God today? Are you firmly persuaded? Amen. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God is what it is. Amen. Amen. You know, that'll help you right away. You know, you start seeing things different already if you understand what, what faith is. Amen. It's a firm persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God. Let's go over to Acts, the 26th verse, the 26th chapter real quick, and we're going to close with this, and we'll get more into faith next week. But you already know what it is. It's a firm persuasion. Amen. So every time you see that word faith in the Bible translated, it's a firm persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God is what it is. Amen. Amen. You don't have to drink cups with, cups of coffee with angels to understand that. Praise the Lord. That's what it is today. It's a firm persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God is what it is. Amen. Acts, the 26th chapter and the 27th verse, it says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Now, now, now listen, this is uh, Paul talking to King Agrippa. Is it what what's happening here? And what he's doing is he's trying to get him saved. Amen. And basically what he's doing is he's trying to form, get him persuaded, form that belief within him, give him some faith. So he'll believe in Jesus Christ is what he's doing. Amen. And he says here to King Agrippa, he says, The King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Hear what he said there? He said he almost persuaded him to be a Christian. He said, You've almost given me faith to be a Christian. What was he doing? He was giving him the information, accumulation of information, so that he could become a Christian and make that choice for himself. He almost persuaded him. Amen. It's a firm persuasion. Amen. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God. I'll give you a good example about this, you know, as we close today. Uh, I remember I was telling my wife about my favorite dessert. <laughs> and I'm trying to describe this to her, you know. I'm like, man, you know, it's wonderful. It's, it's apple dessert. And uh, it's got uh, cinnamon crumbs in it. You know, and they heat up the apple, you know, the cinnamon apples, you know, and they put the cinnamon crumbs in there, you know, and I'm telling her about her. I'm, I'm, I want her to take, take me and get it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So then you, then you, you do, they dump this uh, wonderful, and I believe it's a, a, a brown sugar type vanilla ice cream. They dump on that thing and it melts within the ice cream, you know, and I'm persuading her about this. And she's like, man, that sounds good, you know. And uh, as I, when they got it right up here at this restaurant, it's, uh, I'm telling her more about it. You know, you can go right up here, you know, right off the highway. You can go get it right there, you know. And I was like, "This is an oh, this is my favorite dessert. I love this thing, you know." And I'll never forget, you know, her and my son. We went over there, and uh, my youngest son. 
and uh, we had this and they were like, Oh wow, this is wonderful. This is good. You know? And they, they, they loved it. They were, we all had our spoons in there. We're all fighting over what we can get from I ended up. I mostly got apples. They got all the good stuff, you know, <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. But I was telling her about it and I persuaded her so much. She stepped out and so did my son. They wanted to have some, you know, think about that. You know, they were persuaded. I built faith within them and they stepped out. Praise the Lord. And we're going to find out, you know, you'll start looking through the book of what Jesus talks about their faith. They heard some things. They got persuaded about some things. And they were, you know, the blind man, these people didn't even see things. And they were persuaded so much they were wanting to act. Think about that. Their faith caused them to be persuaded and they were wanting to act. Wow. Powerful to think about. Amen. You know, your faith has to be released. You, we're going to be talking about that today, the different aspects of faith, you know, faith. You know, we'll talk about what it is. We just talked, told you what it is. We'll talk a little bit more about that next week, you know, how it comes how and how it needs to be released and how it's fed. Amen. You got to feed your faith too. We're going to talk about all those aspects, praise the Lord, throughout the coming weeks. But, you know, you need to remember today, though, that it's, it's a firm persuasion. It's a belief. It's a conviction based on the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy today. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us this week, Father Lord, and, and touching every person as they're listening today, Father Lord. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for everybody that's listening and they're learning about faith, Lord. Help this stick within them, Father, today. Help them to get this within them as they read that word, Father. Help them to see that clearly, more and more clearly as they read the word, Father, and learn about faith and as we're studying it. And Father, we just ask for that and they'll be established and grounded in it we pray in jesus name amen amen and father if there's someone here that's not saved the lord or they want to get right with you today father lord we ask you to touch them right now lord we ask that you draw them in today father don't let them turn off the the program don't let them change the the program lord or if they're listening help them not to just change to something else Lord, we're going to take a few minutes for them right now, and we're just going to pray for them. If you don't, if you're trying to get right with Jesus today, and you're trying to get your life right, pray this with me, Father. I want to be right with you today. Help me to be right with you. Help me to walk my walk with you. I just confess all my sins, and I thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, cleanse me today. Help me to walk fresh and anew and have a fresh and anew relationship with you today in Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Father, for it. And if you don't know Jesus, pray this with me. Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th and 10th verse, he says, if you, he says, if you confess Jesus as Lord and believe God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. All you got to do is pray this with me. Father, I just confess that you've raised Jesus from the dead today. And Father, I confess Jesus as Lord of my life right now in Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Father, for it in advance. And I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. If you pray that right then with me, you know you are in the family and you're right with God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you know, if you could, if you would let us know, we'd love to know about it so we can be a blessing to you. You can email us at Jer Jeremiah S Ministries at yahoo.com. We'd love to be a blessing to you. We love you. God bless you. We hope that you have a wonderful day.